My friends, how are you? Come on, let's get ready for something really special. Let's get ready for a message that will speak about something that all of us uh, we are looking for. Have we found uh, this? Um, I don't know, in my language you call it Fata Morgana. That means uh, an illusion, the love, the love that all of us we are looking for. Are you looking for love somewhere around uh, whatever your eyes can see? Are you looking for love there? Are you looking for love in the smile of a beautiful girl, brother? Are you looking for love in that masculine uh, hug of a man, sister? Are you looking for love, uh, sister? And the smile uh, of that very handsome Prince Charming. All of us, we are looking for love. And many of us, we don't find that love that we are looking for. We live in a world that has such a romanticized vision of love. And uh, sadly, this romanticized vision of love takes over because it's pushed upon us in every single aspect uh, of life. You open your TV and you'll find this romanticized version of love. You read the news and you'll find this romanticized version of love. Even though in many churches, denominations, the pastor, the presbyter, that uh, spiritual leader that uh, he is there to share the word of God, he'll talk to you about this romanticized version of love. Many of our children, they jump into boyfriend-girlfriend thing because they look for the same romanticized version of love. No wonder do we get broken beyond belief at a very early age because we look for this romanticized version of love. But what is love? What is love? Good question. And since uh, humanity opened uh, their eyes after Adam and Eve, very inquisitive eyes, and they search everywhere, trying to find out what is love. They never, even today, they never found a, a satisfying answer to this question. Because? Why? Because they're looking in total uh, different direction than God. They were not looking to God. They were not uh, taking the answers from God. And uh, in the process of looking and looking, frustration creeped in. I'm going to read to you Bible verses uh, that uh, if only I would have known this and if only I would have believed this. When I was looking for love as well. Ah, many, many tears and so much pain would have been able, uh, I would have been able to avoid. Well, let's jump into it. But now let's not forget first to pray. Let's lift our hands and uh, let's give glory to God because He is a God that deserves our glory. He deserves our attention. He deserves our love. So we will love you, Lord. We will focus on you, Lord. And we will give you control of our life every single day. You take over. And do it to our life what you please, Lord. May we be uh, your servants now and forevermore. But you're not calling us servants. You call us daughters and sons. How amazing. How amazing indeed. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to read to you powerful Bible verses that will prove once again, if we need something like that, like proof that God, God is love. And He loved us and He loves us forevermore. Let me read to you the most powerful Bible verse ever. 
Is there such a thing as the most powerful Bible verse? Some, they tend to agree. Some, they say, no, every single Bible verse is powerful. Yes, every single Bible verse is powerful. But listen to this. John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Brother, sister, my friend, God loves you. God loves you. God loves me. God loves us. He gave His one and only Son. Why did He give His one and only Son? Because He loved us. Because He loved the world. A world that loves sin. A world that despises God. A world that wants to be left alone to do their own bit. A world that screams out, My will be done, not Thy will be done, God. God loved this world and He carried on loving this world. Try to understand this kind of love if you can, because I can't. God loves you, my friend. For as John, for as John, another verse that I want to share with you. For as John chapter 4, verses 7 to 8. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Friends, God loves us, and He commands us to love each other as well. <laughs> Easy to say, uh, very hard to do. Because in our heart, we're born with this selfishness. We are so self-centered, and we care only about ourselves many times, what satisfies us, what gives us joy. And it's hard for us to love someone else but ourselves. Many times we claim, people, they, they love to claim that they love their partners, their spouses. But uh, if you analyze that love, you will see that it is a love, if we can call that love, based on what they can get from a relationship. I love you. But that words are, I need this, this, and this from you. And if you can provide what I need from you, then I'll love you still. If you can't, then I'm going to have to let you go and find someone else that will be able to provide for me what I need. That's not love. But God commands us in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 8, to love one another. Generally, with that kind of love that He loves us with. Because love comes from God. And if we love with that kind of love, then we're born of God. We're born again with other words and we know God. Not uh, just by um, a professional faith with our lips, but with our life we know God and we love God. Another verse. Another verse is 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 to 11. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atonic sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Again, John. Oh, Apostle of Love, no wonder the, the Lord Himself was calling Him my beloved. John, John, Apostle John, the Apostle of Love, everybody calls Him the Apostle of Love. And the one that lived uh, longer, and died actually of old age, regardless of all the persecution, all the pain that He endured, all the torture, all in the name of Jesus. He was even boiled alive in oil, and by some miracle, he managed to survive. The Apostle of Love, John. God loves us. And He showed His love by sending His one and only Son into the world. And that is love because He loved us first. He loved us when there was nothing worthy, and even now there's nothing worthy of loving us. But now uh, we know Him, 
And now we desperately allow him every single day to take over and say, Lord, I'm not in charge. Oh, I don't want to be in charge. You be in charge, Lord. You do your will in my life because I know that your will is the best. For my will, I don't know what's best for me, Lord. My will uh, leads me to being finished, self-destroying. That's what my will accomplishes because my will has roots in my sinful nature. And my sinful nature doesn't love me, weirdly enough. My sinful nature wants me to end up in hell. I don't understand why, but it is what it is. You take over, Lord, once again. Let this be our prayer all the time, my friends. First John, as I said, chapter 4, verses 9 to 11. It always leads there. God loving us and us being commanded to love one another. Because this is how we show His love in our life. First John, first John, chapter 4, verse 16. By the way, all these quotations of scriptures are from New International Version. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. God loves us, friends. Let's live in God. Let's live in love and people will know that there is God in us, that Jesus lives in us because Jesus commands us to love one another. And when He commands us to love one another, that doesn't mean that He commands us to tolerate sin, to tolerate injustice, to tolerate all the things that this world engages in, actually our love for God and our love for people commands us to speak against sin. Because we love this world, we're not gonna, or at least we'll try our best not to let them end up in hell. It's just like you see a driver driving his car right towards a cliff. And you warn that person. You say, please stop. There's a cliff ahead of you. Many times uh, the driver will scream at you, don't judge me. Who are you to tell me where shall I go? That's the attitude of this world. But still, carry on warning people because you love them. And God commanded us to love one another. That's the Bible verses that I want to share with you now. I don't want to overdo it. God bless you, friends. And never forget, God loves you. No matter what the devil might whisper. And he can whisper lots of things. And he does whisper lots and lots of things. As you binge in God's word, you will know that God loves you. And he loved you even at that time. As I said, and he loved me even in the time in which we were indulging in sin. We're so busy doing our own will that we have no time for it. nothing and nobody but ourselves. But God loved us and He still loves us. Thank you so much. God bless you. And until next time, stay close to Jesus. Now more than ever. See you soon.